got him tweaking like a method when I speak a sentence. Cats keep begging for change and I'ma beat them senseless. My crew murders every beat that produces send us. In this shit right here, this is no exception. In this shit right here, it's what freaking death is. I make movies for the blind and music for the deaf kids. And I ain't signing till my check is bigger than your pension. I'm fucked up in a mental, I got a head case. I'm so rugged, my album comes with a neck brace. A pair of crutches and a motherfucking panic button. This goddamn microphone is mine, fam, I dare you touch it. Smack in on the poet here with the um, Ghetto Geek TV Weekly with my man Maroney. What up, y'all? What up? So, um, Maroney, man, what got you into hip hop? Um, I first started. I've been writing probably since like 13 years old. We started with Tech C Battles Online, and it was called Rapboard.com. Me and my dude, how how shout out to him. That's when I first started. We was doing the Tech C Battles for probably like two years, and I was in. I did theater in in grade school. You know, sixth to eighth grade, I was in a, it was called drama. And uh, eighth grade, the teacher came up and asked if we'd do something. So me and Hush wrote a little Halloween song. It was like sample from the Halloween movie. And that was the first time we performed. We did the, the Halloween show there. And ever since then, we started recording more. He got equipment from, for Christmas from his mother. We just started recording, doing our own stuff. We, we built with leads for a little bit, and then just started taking off from there. Oh, hell yeah. What was like the first thing that drew you into hip-hop? Not just the battles, I'm saying, like, who's like your first artist that you heard, first song, first album? My mother used to listen to shit for Mad Long. Like, she had, like, the EPMD and KRS-One, yeah, like, cassette yeah. tapes and shit. <laughs> so, growing up, she always had that shit. She told me, I personally don't remember, but she told me Public Enemy used to be my shit. Oh, yeah? I used to shut the TV off and be dancing in the blackness of the TV while she was getting <laughs> in the crib to the music and shit. So that was like how I first got into like rap itself, and then like I said before, the hush shit we started yeah. writing, and that was just that. So like you've been in it, you've been on hip hop since you was a kid. I've been doing, I've been on hip hop since forever, as long as I can remember. And I've been doing shows like live performance since I was 15. I'm 24 now, so almost a decade. Long time, man. Yeah. And you've been doing battles. The battles I started doing like four years ago. Shout out to Aztec. That OG and uh, direct and shit for making that happen. That just fell into place, I guess. I'm a funny dude, so the shit happened. Yeah. But I'm trying to chill back a little from the battles, because floods of music. People don't take the music as serious, because they think you're just a comedian yeah, rapper yeah, yeah. or whatever. So, so um, who's your favorite uh, battle rappers that are out right now? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no one. Me. Maroney. Yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. I like Maroney. Everyone's second best. Um... Immaculate just made his comeback on the yeah. King of the Dot event. I thought that you even dope. like even not even just on like the Boston scene. I'm saying like you, yeah. you have to like watch. I think Disaster's and... still probably like one of the best. I don't really the Smack URL dudes. I don't really fuck with because yeah. I feel like they're too one dimensional. Yeah, yeah, the schemes and shit they're cool, but it's too one dimensional. Okay. You still need the jokes. You still need the freestyle aspect. Mm -hmm. So all in all, I have to say Disaster is probably my favorite, okay. most entertaining at least. Yeah, you know. So yeah. that that would probably be my favorite battle rapper but I probably wouldn't want to listen to a song from doing <laughs> <laughs> my gosh yeah. but battles he's dope my gosh yeah. so who's your top five dead or alive MC hip hop artist uh, I mean changes weekly you sometimes know? I'm so, some days I'm I'm all about mainstream shit I'll listen to French Montana and the yeah. Go Boys for a week straight and then next week it'll be like a brother Ali so mm -hmm. top five I, I don't even have I can't even name the top five well, that's dope. That's yeah. something different. Yeah. Everybody else I has their like top five. Top nothing. You know? I listen to shit. I'll be arguing with my girl sometimes because I'll be. She's strictly. She's a real hip hop head. She like yeah. all underground shit. But I'll be listening to some French Montana or some Joel Santana or something. Now she'll be getting pissed off trying to hear some Lauren Hill or some shit. Yeah, yeah. But some days it's different for me, and I just go whatever the fuck I feel like listening to. So how's the struggle in the home with the uh, the radio play? Who usually wins? Is it her? I or mean, she it? wins because I still <laughs> fuck with the shit she listens to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And if there ever is a big problem, she'll just throw on her headphones or some shit. Yeah. But she usually disputes. wins. Yeah, she usually wins, and it ain't really that much of an argument because she does listen to fresh shit. You know? Yeah, but yeah. So who out of like the the new cats that are coming in that you like like you so you like you like the mainstream I do like, like mainstream yeah. music yeah like you're a lyrical dude yeah you know what I mean I personally make underground music but I yep. the, I like, like to listen to mainstream music um, the new cats um, Joey Badass is a beast yeah. I think he's nice um, ASAP Rocky is like half and half I see him doing L sometimes I don't mm -hmm. see uh, I not so much. much yeah and uh, 
I don't know, I'm kind of ignorant to shit. I don't really pay attention to much shit except for what the fuck I'm doing, so... If y'all got suggestions, <laughs> yeah, I'll listen and let you know. But other than that, I don't really fuck with nobody. Nah? Nah, except for local. I fuck with local dudes because they're helping me, but... Yeah. I mean, so I was, was listening to them beforehand, but now that they're helping yeah, me, I'm yeah, like, yeah. all right, where are yeah, these yeah, dudes? Yeah. Got to support. Yeah. So who's your talk? Who, who do you like coming out of Boston right now? Up and comings, old school cats? Uh, I got to go with Sling, yeah. Rex... Jason's crazy slept on. He's a beast. Yeah. Um, Stiz Grimey's doing his thing. Uh, there's probably people I'm gonna forget. I'm gonna get crazy fucking Facebook messages and tweets <laughs> about this shit. Um, my dude Big Kurt, he's doing some work. Um, shout out to Chilla doing the battles. He also got crazy music. Hopefully he's gonna hit y'all with some more of that. And uh, that's all I got for right now. If I forgot you, deal. Bad hit. <laughs> Maybe next time. Yeah, maybe next. next. You got coming out in the future. Uh, right now, me and Archetype are working on an EP. Um, executively produced by Slane, entirely produced by Archetype. Mm -hmm. He's going to engineer the whole shit, produce the whole shit. Probably only like six or seven songs. Um, Rex will be on that. Apathy already sent me his verse, so the demigods are represented on that. Slane got a verse on that. I'm trying to get maybe one or two more features, either big or small, I don't know, but... That'll be coming out probably the next couple months. I don't know when this footage will drop right here that you're watching, but four or five months into 2014, that EP should be dropping Maroni and Archetype for entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. I got a question. You said you make underground music as though it's a type of music and not just promotion. What what makes you what makes your music underground? I'm Other than just the, the rude, lack of it's exposure. It's too rude to be mainstream. It's too <laughs> rude and ignorant and straight in your face. I mean, I guess it could be pushed mainstream if the right back got behind it because you listen to today's mainstream and it's drugs this and drugs yeah. that, bitches this, bitches that. But I just feel like it's too gritty, it's too much happening at once. It's not just a da 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 boom, it's a da 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 boom. So it's too. Not as simplistic. It's not simplistic it. enough to be sellable in a mainstream market, so it has to be considered underground. In my, in my opinion. Sounds like. Um, not to make the cliche. Yeah. But, not to make the cliche comparison, but. Eminem wasn't wasn't simplistic when he first came out. But he was the only one. So now people like me, it's hard to get put onto a big platform like that because it's always just like you said the cliche reference. Oh Eminem. Yeah. Oh Eminem. No. So. So those are some of the struggles that you see on on, on making it. Or I mean, they call me Eminem all the time. I'm just like, whatever the fuck, I'll take the shit. Do yeah. your best selling rap artist. Hell yeah. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. But that's interesting that he said the best selling rapper. Yeah. Like that was that was the first thing that's interesting because most people will say the nicest lyricist, the best writer. He made money. money. <laughs> that's what it's nah, about. It's good it's to see. Money. Yeah, it's good to see where your mind is. Like, yeah, and, and, and I'm not gonna knock. I would never knock anyone for trying to make money. Like, yeah. you yeah. gotta make money. You gotta so. you gotta think right. You could be the best writer, lyricist, hip hop cat ever. Soldier no Boy still you. Soldier Boy still sold millions yeah, doing exactly. the damn stanky leg. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? So. so it doesn't matter who you have your fan base. The backing that you have for yeah, a track, exactly. you know, and it's 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 business minded. And you know? people always say true, to, stay true to yourself. They think I was switching my steeds. Staying true to myself is making money. Like rapping is fun. I always rap regardless of anything. But I pursue it. I go in the studio. I record. I do shows because I want to be fucking rich. Yeah. And I want to be famous. All right. Right to I'm, the point. I'm making <laughs> money yeah. no matter what. But the point of me right now, 24 years old, going as hard as I'm going, is because when I'm 30 years old, I want to be. You want people to big. know who you are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's why I do it right now. A lot of people say I switched my shit up. And I did for a little bit. There was about six, seven months where I was getting banged up, fucked up. And I stopped that a little bit. You know, I still do my thing, shit. but I want to be rich. Yeah. Money. You, so that whole 25 and 30 thing, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years, I see myself maybe not rich, but I see myself hopefully not working and just <laughs> fucking doing tours and, Hell yeah. and, and selling features and, and shit like that. But anything could change, you know. Tomorrow I could fucking lose my voice and never have it back, you know what I mean? Yeah, So yeah. It's hard to tell what will happen in five years, but in my head and how I'm working now, I think that I'll be where I want to be in five years, which is nationally touring, globally touring, and making good money. Not fucking nine to five and, and rapping at the same time. Cause working means a sucker. <laughs> like, I work all day long, mm -hmm. and I don't have as much time to spend on my shit that I'd like to. Yeah. I know that feeling. Shit's terrible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind when you're done with music? Or when you're done, when when you leave this world, 
what did what do you want the legacy that your music will be left? Uh, honestly, it might be it might be <laughs> fucked up, but I want people to remember me as being like a fucking douchebag. You know what I mean, <laughs> like the image of my music I portray is that I'm just like so Quincy that it isn't even right. So I want to I want to represent Quincy in my music as much as I want to represent Maroney, but ultimately I want to. When I leave, I want people to be like, that dude was fucking funny as shit and a scumbag at the same time, which is hard to be right on the fence. Yeah. You you're either a good guy and you're funny or that dude's a scumbag piece of shit, but I flirt the line real good because yeah. I don't do anything too scummy. I just talk scummy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, nothing wrong with that. So that's the like, it's as fucked up as that sounds. That's what I want to leave behind, people being like, that dude was a fucking douche. So. Yeah. So what do you, um, what's like a dream collab for you? Producer, singer, the apathy rap shit. The apathy shit was something that I wanted for for a grip. Mm -hmm. And Slain, shout out to Slain, shout out to Apathy for doing it. But Slain is who built the bridge that yeah. made it happen. And the whole time, Slain's like, damn, you really want this verse? Because every time he would ask me who I wanted, that's apathy, the one person. Apathy, yeah, apathy. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I see. I see so how apathy you is who I wanted the most, and and God, when I got the shit, and he killed the verse that he gave me. But that's who I wanted the most. Um, now that you have it, though, because you have that, that's yeah. not necessarily a dream collab anymore. You made yeah, that shit happen. happen. Yeah, um, so what's your dream collab? Of, like anybody, any singer, dead or alive, Frank Sinatra on the hook, whatever. Um, I like to do a premiere on the beat, yeah. and uh, probably I'd say myself and Rock him. That's dope. Would be something that would be a much higher goal, but that would be something that would be that would be like a dream for myself to do. That's dope. Yeah, that's what's up. You need a premiere shit. I'm gonna make that happen regardless. Yeah. It might happen with money, you Whatever. know what I mean? But that's what it takes in this world. But that'll definitely happen one day. Mighty dollar, man. Yeah, exactly. The rules Mighty dollar. It's ugly. So um, yeah, man. So you rocked the show recently with your wife as the with your girl as the hype man. Yeah. Hype woman, I should say. Hype so, woman, yeah, yeah. so how was that? How did that even you know come about? Um, we were at Archetype's birthday bash. Um, Rusty Jux was performing, mm. and the dude was rocking with his kid. His kid was like 13, 14. And that was his hype man. And I was like, yo. Through the roof, I was like, this shit is dope. And then we came back to the crib, we were chilling, and I just kicked the joke to her. Like, oh, you come rock with me. I had a show the next day. And she was all aboard. Boom. All right. And um, at first, I really didn't think she was going to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> she was going to back out in a like, couple seconds later. Get cold feet. But she was down. I, I had to do some shit that day. I, I was filming a video, and I came back. I came through the door, she had the music on, I could hear my shit going, she was in the room Hell practicing yeah. the shit. I'm Hell like, yeah. alright, so we'll try it out. We did the show up in New Hampshire. How'd she do? I mean, she did alright. Oh, I yeah, yeah. Be like, she, she, she <laughs> did kill the shit, we, we need to practice and shit, we've been practicing. Nice, nice. Um, so that's a future look? It's, for at least locally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might not go with me nationally and go yeah, with me yeah, globally, exactly. but when you see me locally, that would be what it is. So That's dope. Look forward to that, because that will definitely help get more women yeah. onto my shit, too, because of it. Oh, it's so cute. So Absolutely. Well, so how do you, you know, how's your demographic looking? You trying to incorporate more females? Or you my demographic is like... Grimy underground. My demographic is off. grimy underground dudes and fucking fat white chicks. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Nah, I got... My demographic, every day I realize, like, damn, I would never think that person... Yeah, but I, I, right now I'm not even focusing on my demographic. I'm just making it. If you like it, listen to it. If you don't, not, see you later. Fuck, but uh, I would like to get more chicks, because even if the chicks, it's not necessarily that I want the girls because I want the girls. But it's like when your chicks there, and the chicks feel chicks. the shit, she's gonna make her boyfriend absolutely buy tickets to your show. Her her boyfriend's gonna buy the drinks, which mm -hmm. return the bars happy yep. when your show sells more. Then they're gonna buy your shirt, and the boyfriend's gonna be forced to buy your CD. So the chicks, the Pe chicks make more money. Man, people don't realize that that like yeah. the females. Once once you get females under your belt, men follow. Yeah, because men chase tails. Yeah, they exactly. get what their girl yeah, exactly. wants. So when you hit like women in a certain way, where you're gonna draw women, or you're gonna have women purchase your, yeah. your merchandise or whatever, it definitely gets yeah. the ball rolling to to even yeah. you know exactly. a bigger population. And that doesn't mean you just make soft poppy ass shit. Cause like my dude Right Hook said, he can make a song about shooting dope and stick dick to them all. Right? Shout out Right Hook. <laughs> yeah, exactly. a beast. I forgot to mention him in the top five of the beam, so yeah, shout out to him, but you don't got to make soft, rappers. stupid shit to get the chicks. You just need to find a way to get the chicks, Yeah. and then dudes follow, and then there's the money. Absolutely. Women bring money. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So um, so who you got in your iPod right now for, like, hip-hop Me. Cast? Me. Me. <laughs> I'm I, on my own shit. No, nah, literally, I, li I literally almost listen to just my own shit because I'm so much of a critic of myself. 
I still listen. I listen. I got the Boston Project in my yeah, shit still. Yo, shout out three tracks on there. I got three verses. My on man, yep. I got a couple more, thing. couple more verses on this new shit too. But um, how did I? How did that? How did that relationship? I was battling. It was Boston versus New York. Um, you better hold. You better hold it down. It was Boston versus New York. I was a headline battle. Aztec and I, Ed OG were the host. The judges were Craig G, mm -hmm. Apathy, Slain, Chris Ferrone. And I think Bay Hollow was the other judge. That sounds like a loaded judge. Yeah, the judge shit was crazy. <laughs> and the kid, exactly. the kid I battled fucking choked every single round like straight <laughs> butt juice. The kid was terrible. And uh, I was doing my thing. I didn't fuck up. I was on my A game. Hell yeah. After that, Slane came up to me. He's like, he stole my face. Thought I looked like him. He's like, come to the studio. <laughs> I went to the studio. We did a record. Nice. He gave me that shit for my mixtape. And then... um. He was busy, whatever. I got a call from him a couple months later. He asked me to come to his spot, and then ever since then, every couple days, he was coming because the studio he was using was in Quincy. Oh, yeah? So every time he was in the studio, he was just calling just me. Even watch. if I wasn't lacing tracks, I was just, just a chilling pretty much with the whole box and probably. Nice. Now, how was that as, as, um, as like an up and coming artist seeing somebody who's as established as Slane? Like, how, is, how did it's that? It's good and bad at the same time. It was good because you're like, well, it's a whole different world of making music. But mm -hmm. then when you're like, oh, I'll go over my boys, I was making shit, you're sitting there like, I, I can't do this. Yeah. Because yeah, it's a whole yeah. different feel from making a whole beat from scratch with someone that's so professional at it, then writing right on the spot, then going yeah. into this spot with a $2,000 microphone and the guy knows what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. Just hanging out with your boy, fucking trying to shitting around. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, I got it. So that. it's helpful. But then at the same time, you need to have your hustle up to have money to do to, what he's doing. Yeah. Or it's going to discourage you because you're going to be making music. And, and it's not going to have the same quality as, yeah. as what you know you're capable of. Yeah, exactly. Because once I recorded with Lou Balls, who was doing the Boston Project shit, a beast. he makes your shit sound too. You can be trash and he's going to make you sound good. Yeah. So I did the shit with him and then I was doing random shit and then I just stopped doing random shit. And that's why I haven't really put out any much that much new shit because... I'm spending money on making shit. Yeah. So I'm not quality. Just, I'm not paying fucking two hundred bucks or whatever set amount for a song and then just putting it on YouTube. Yeah. I'm gonna fucking pay for a whole album and then press it up and make motherfuckers buy the shit. Yeah. Well that's the plan at least. But yeah. Motherfuckers bootleg shit like crazy. Well, you, I, I put out one album and then my own boys were like bootlegging my shit, like uh, burning copies uh, and giving it away. I'm like, what the fuck? At uh, least wait till I sell all the fucking hard copies. Gotta put the money back in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. Once it's online, I really don't mind if you're bootlegging it. But if I paid to have 300 hard copies, you're trying to, you're trying you're already to make bootlegging money. it before people, I sold them all. People don't understand when you put your money into it. You know what I mean? Like you, you have to, that's that you, amount back. Yeah. Exactly. And if they're handing the shit out for free, they're only hurting you. Which when it when it's on a big scale, it don't matter. Like when I first got with Slane and he he asked me to be his hype man for one of his shows, the first time I rocked the stage with him and shit. And um, he's like, you can get all my songs on uh, on YouTube. So he wanted me to learn all this shit off YouTube, and it didn't bother him that he had the same song on YouTube a hundred times. How do you feel about um, rap being diluted on a local scene? Seems like everybody's a rapper nowadays. I mean, everybody's a rapper, but it, it can make it harder. If you're whack, it makes it harder. If you're good, it makes it easier because you look so much better compared to all these shitty-ass dudes. Mm -hmm. So seeing a thousand rappers, don't get me mad because I know I'm nice. And all these styles of whack dudes just make me look that much better. Okay. So if anyone's complaining about the scene being diluted, it's because they suck. <laughs> and they're not good enough. And you heard that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, don't bother me. I mean, I make fun of whack rappers all the time. But yeah. I'm not going to say stop doing what you're doing because who the fuck am I going to say that? Yeah, yeah. Like you said earlier, Soldier Boy, <laughs> boom. Stanky leg, he's huge. That's he's true. rich. So Off of YouTube. You know, someone's seen him on YouTube. And now he's a huge star. And he's terrible. So if oh, you're whack, don't stop oh, because you've got a chance. Yeah. Like I said earlier, it's all, to me, it's a money scheme. So if someone to whack, it might be the same thing. They might not even care if they're good or yeah. not. They just want money. And you have the you have more of a chance to get money off of being garbage than you do <laughs> off of being good. That means all you whack rappers stay in the game. Keep doing your thing. Make me look. <laughs> You'll be the millionaire. No, because people with talent usually are smarter yeah. when it comes to rapping because... The more talented you are, is about the shit you're saying for the most part. Yeah. So if you're whack, it means more so that you're stupider. Mm -hmm. And then you're easily persuaded into signing some dumbass contract or something crazy and doing some stupid shit. Not getting paid for it. Yeah, or well, getting paid <laughs> big money, kind of. But even the thing is, like, Soldier Boy made good money, but he didn't make nearly as much as yeah. people made off of him. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's kind of stupid, but smart at the same time. But yeah, keep doing your thing, whack rappers. <laughs> All the Making them look good. Yeah. Oh, yeah.
So you got the EP coming out. Any other future plans you got? I'm going to drop a free mixtape next next year, too. Probably okay. within next summer, for sure. Summer 2014, I'm going to have a bunch of features on there. I'm going to have big producers on there. It ain't going to be the, at the share at my friend's studio. I'm going to yeah, pay yeah, to do yeah, the mixtape, yeah. and I'm going to just release it for free and keep people riding with me. Now, now quality over quantity is key. That's my biggest thing. Like I got boys that I've been doing shit with all the time. And they record a track and upload it right away. And the shit's not, I'm yeah. not saying the shit's whack, mm -hmm. but you're putting out five videos a month and they're getting eight to se seven to eight hundred views each. I'm dropping one video every three months and it's getting five, six thousand, you know what I mean? So it, it, it's Shout definitely... out on the road to ten thousand, blocka blocka. Yeah, make sure you check that out. But yeah, it's definitely, it's not about how much shit you're putting out, it's about what you're putting out, when you're Quality putting it word. out, and how you're putting it out. Mm -hmm. So... Don't waste your time wasting all your material putting it out there, cause then you're gonna end up you end up saying some hot ass shit. You put it out there two days later, you put out another song, and then this hot shit gets slept on. Yeah. So definitely, it's more about the approach of how you're releasing the shit than just releasing it. Giving people a reason to listen to you. Yeah, exactly. If they hear you every time. single day, they might not care. They might skip by it. Especially when your main source of promotion is Facebook. If you got a new song every day, they might just be like, yeah, fuck it. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely chill out on the releases. To you rappers out there. I gotcha. Yes. Um, Moroni underscore music. That's M-O-R-O-N-E-Y yeah. underscore music. That's the Twitter. Moroni Hip Hop's the Facebook. Uh, Moroni Hip Hop's the YouTube. Keep fucking with me. I'm about to be on the big blog site soon once the fucking mechanisms connect right and shit. But they're all working. They just gotta work simultaneously. Yeah. Hey, yo, it's Moroni. I'm a speaker free for Ghetto Geek TV. They got the light on me while I'm sitting at my kitchen table. Spit because I'm able. MC step get ripped and disabled. Yeah, you need a amp. You making up words. You need a fake <laughs> leg. Spit it. I don't even give a fuck. I'm a space head. Just roll the fat jibber. I'm Nat Wigger, the rap sicker than any cat you ever heard. Actually rap iller than any rap killer you ever sit. Spit words, we got Twix in the m and M. Spit, I in the m and M. Rip, any of them. Sit, yeah, sit. Don't stand to get ripped in half and you'll be more than one man. Two and a half like Charlie Sheen. I drop a free, awful G. Apologies, never. It's Apollo Creed. If you got a problem, you can try boxing me and I'll knock your teeth out your face onto the concrete. Boston streets. Yeah, you represent Dawson's Creek. Y'all just geeks. Y'all don't want that heat. Rat batic back at it with a mic phone. Asthmatic caught ice cold. When I write flows, Wolverine bows, leave my foes with a slight stone. So hand me the ball and I'ma put it in the end zone. And keep hating, I love the attention. My name they always mention. I really love the affection. So go ahead and mumble under your breath. How big in my head is I cause ruckus when I'm up in the session, puffing a bunch of the best bud they got in my section.